Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Praise God, God bless you. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. You have to learn this principle. There is joy in our journey, life journey. We have to enjoy our life journey and we always have something in our lives to destroy our happiness, we all know. Your mind keeps telling you, no way your life is going to improve, isn't it? Don't listen to your voice from inside. Keep walking in God's ways and keep prophesying God's promises on you purposely. Your time is coming. That you have to do purposely. Hallelujah, our subject today is practice to rejoice at all times that brings your victory. Life is far from easy. We can carefully plan things out and take precautions, save money, but bad things just happen. We can lose a loved one, suffering surrounds us, and there is no way of avoiding pain completely. Job 5 7 says, Man is born to trouble as sparks fly upward. As sparks inevitably fly upward from the fire, people will surely encounter trouble in life because of their sin nature. This natural corruption is the reason a person needs to be born again and baptized. A person needs to have a savior or his life struggles continue mysteriously. He himself doesn't know what is going to happen or what he is facing in front of him. Regardless of what we are going through every day, we are commanded in Christ to rejoice always. Philippians 4, 4, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Though it may look an impossible command to obey, we understand about God or if we understand how God works, it will be possible to find a way to rejoice. As his children, God promises his care, his solutions and guidances for our life problems and he will give us a peaceful and prosperous life we should have trust in god god doesn't promise to shield us from the possibility of being hurt and being painful in our life that you should understand jesus told in this world you will have trouble many people will think now i am in christ i will not face any problem jesus didn't say that as sparks fly upward we will have troubles. But if we keep walking in God's ways, we will have solutions, we will have peace, and we will have favor of God. That is a different life that you should choose to live. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 state, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks whatever happens. Unsaved people don't rejoice in the Lord. They don't pray continually and give thanks at all times because they don't know. Isn't it? And religious people, sometimes they pray when they feel like they give thanks to God. Or 31st December is their Thanksgiving day or they will have a special Thanksgiving day. That day they will give thanks to God. But children of God should rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks to whatever happens. This you have to practice. You have to keep practicing. Otherwise, your life is going to be miserable. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a statement that may surprise you. If not, it may be impossible for you. That is, there should not be any circumstances or even that can diminish our joy, prayer and thanksgiving. And if all the three are missing in a child of God, child of God is sinning against God. If all these three are missing, when? Not when everything goes good. All the time. Especially in our miserable conditions. Hallelujah. Now some of you will doubt about Romans 12.15 which says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. They are simply saying, Show compassion, empathy and sympathy with people. They are outward emotions. Inwardly, you should always have joy. Yes, we should show sympathy to the people. Yes, we will be grieved by the things that we see. But 
there should be a joy inside always that is joy in the lord people of this world doesn't know about this and they don't practice and they don't have this but the children of god should practice to have the joy of the lord in the heart of them second corinthians 6 10 paul says so sorrowful yet always rejoicing that should be our testimony this is paul's testimony that he obeyed this commandment as a way of life even though he was grieving with sorrows of others and sorrow over the failure of believers in the church many believers failed to continue their faith that is really sorrowful isn't it they will accept jesus christ when they find life is hard and troublesome many lose their faith and go away from god hmm? they will think that there is no god or they will say that this god is a cruel god it is so pathetic to see such people especially for a pastor and he had so many sorrows he had sorrows over hatred of loved one he loved many people but what he received only hatred and the sorrowing over dishonor abuse and so many things that he faced as a minister of god and all these kind of emotional experiences never touched his joy he says rejoice always rejoice sorrowful but rejoicing that should be our testimony the reason why god commands us to rejoice always there is a purpose behind that we should understand why god is telling us to rejoice always rejoice always that means right now today with the situation that you are going through with the difficult family you are in with the difficult job you are in with whatever you are going through you can rejoice and you have to as a child of god if you are not doing that you are sinning against god you should understand but if this joy isn't connected with those circumstantial things then where does this joy come from how we can be joyful or how we can rejoice at all times one hint we can find in first peter 4:13 which says rejoice to the extent that you are partaking christ suffering paul is telling rejoice to the extent that you partake of christ sufferings what does it mean by partaking christ suffering how can suffering be rejoicing rejoice to the extent that you are partaking christ suffering the question is are you ready to partake of christ sufferings you may be thinking i you i have so many sufferings now i should carry his suffering also eh listen to me very carefully christ sufferings were those suffering he experienced not to sin hebrews 4:15 there is joy peace and healing in christian life when we suffer evil doing good when we suffer evil doing good this is christ suffering a life of victory and success will always give everyone joy isn't it if your life is successful you are rejoicing oh i have so much of success i have good education i never failed i am just going step by step a eh? good job everything so you will be so happy and you have bought one house car again again earning so much somebody will say that look at the life of success isn't it so that will give you joy and you know that a life of success will give you joy in the same way growing in righteousness is a life of success oh this is what you are telling when you grow in righteousness you can understand a kind of joy a kind of peace a kind of favor from god that only you can experience this is a life of success this you will never ever get from anywhere nobody can give this joy this peace this success hmm? hallelujah as believers in christ we should learn to practice to partake of christ suffering to have victory over our sins joy that comes from suffering evil doing good this we should practice for example someone has treated me unjustly i really wanted to do or i really wanted to retaliate in my flesh immediately the sin in me wants something and it wants to get angry and offended and get depressed but 
when I decided, I knew, yes, I am a child of God. I have a suffering. I have to take Christ's suffering. I have decided to take Christ's suffering. I take up the battle not to sin. I have decided to walk through God's ways, not to be suspicious, bitter, offended, irritated. All these emotions are bubbling inside, rising inside. But I know I have to go through Christ's suffering. I am controlling them. I am killing them. I don't want them to come up. It is coming. I am not telling that it is not coming. It is coming. But I know by the fear of God, one by one, I am killing them. Hallelujah. That means I am denying my sinful desires what they want. My suffering, that is my flesh is suffering, isn't it? My flesh is suffering inside. My flesh wants to retaliate. But my flesh is suffering, controlling, 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 controlling. I will be rewarded from heaven. This is the blessing God told. God didn't tell that, be in your flesh and sit and pray. Take Christ's suffering. Suffer in your flesh. Otherwise, what will happen? Suffering is there for everyone. So what the worldly people will do, including many believers, they will retaliate in their flesh. When you retaliate in the flesh, your mind will be suffering like anything. No peace, no joy. Anchor is increasing. Bitterness is increasing. Revenge is increasing. You don't know what to do. You will definitely get the result of all this. This is the world and this is the way many believers live. But you can choose to carry Christ's suffering. Yes, some real problem you faced with. It's very difficult. Feel like running away. But I decided to kill my sin. I decided to carry Christ's suffering. This is the suffering and God said carry Christ's suffering. What is Christ's suffering? Kill all the flesh that is coming inside. Little by little. Little by little. You can see the peace. You can see the joy. And you can have hope. Faith will increase. Trust will increase. First Peter 5 1 says, If we suffer with him, we will be glorified with him. This is the suffering. And the believers will think whatever suffering they are facing is the suffering because they are born again, baptized and going to a church. First Peter 5 1 if we suffer with him, that is Christ's suffering, to kill the flesh, kill the sin, we will be glorified with him. Another example I will give you. I am worried about many things. I have so many issues. You can relate to yourself. I have prayed, prayed, prayed. Nothing I am seeing before me. I feel God is not answering me. I feel God has rejected my issue. What happens? Worry will increase. Sadness will increase. Is that correct? No. At that time also, we should rejoice. Normally, at such time, worry will increase. Anxiety will increase. Fear will increase. So, how do we rejoice at such time? You should preach to yourself. Rejoice, my soul. Today, we sang that song. Hmm? Sing, my soul. Oh, my soul, sing. God is good. God is good. You have to preach to yourself when you are depressed, when you are sad, when you are worried. You have to preach to yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to encourage your soul. God is a good God. He will never leave me, never forsake me. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Oh, my soul, never be anxious. You have to preach to yourself. Psalms 103, 1. All these process you have to go through. Jumma sit and daydream and pray, nothing will improve. Hmm? You have to do some work with God. This is called spiritual work. Hallelujah. When we face with any suffering, we should be ready to go through Christ's suffering. Remember, you are going through a suffering. Go through Christ's suffering. But many of you will forget or you are not ready to go through Christ's suffering. You should not retaliate in your flesh. What happens? You should know love, joy, fruit of spirit should increase in me. Love, joy, peace, patience, meekness. I am very rude. I should control. I should not speak like in my rudeness. I am not faithful. I don't have any self-control. 
control, control, control. This is Christ's suffering. Hallelujah. We need daily commitment for this. A lot of prayers we need. That's why we are together in church. Church is called a place of prayer. God's temple of prayer. A place of prayer. And we ourselves are called God's temple. God's temple is a house of prayer. You should have a lot of prayer. You should pray for each other. Because we are all going through the same suffering. It's very difficult to control our flesh. First of all, you should know the way you are retaliating is wrong, isn't it? You yourself should understand your wrong characters. It is wrong. And that is going to reward you even if you are leaving Christ and church and going and living in this world. Please, believers, understand. Many believers left the faith, left the church. They have gone to the world thinking that God is not blessing me. Because they have not lived this life. They have not gone through Christ's suffering. They are only seeing suffering after suffering. And they were only praying. That is the reason. We have to go through Christ's suffering. Paul says in Romans 5, 3 and 4, We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, patience. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Sanctification is a process by which we are made holy. And all forms of struggles and sufferings are therefore a purpose. Every pain we go through, a purpose is there for that. What is the purpose? Your sanctification. You are not ready. You will only retaliate at that time. You will burst out. Stop. Stop it. Learn to live Christian life and be blessed. I want some people to stand with me. To live this life and show that God is living for us. And to show many blessings that no eye can ever see, no ear could ever hear, or no heart could ever understand. Such blessings children of God should receive. Enjoy. Are you ready? You want that, but you are not ready for Christ's suffering. If you are not ready for Christ's suffering, world is going to give a good life. Youngsters, you think that this is a restricted life. In which way this is a restricted life? Come and tell me. I want to know. I really want to know, youngsters, how Christian life is a restricted life. You should not enjoy the sins of the world. You can enjoy the world rightfully. Sins of the world. You should not enjoy that soul. The world, how it enjoys, they want to boost, they want to gather together. It. Gathering together means one bottle has to be there. Otherwise, what enjoyment? Hmm? Isn't it? This you have to live. This is good. That is the only way you can enjoy. The world is thinking, lot of problems, tension. So what they have to do? Some drugs they have to inject so that they get some good feeling. This is the way you have to enjoy. In which way Christ is restricting you? I want the youngsters to come and tell me. I will explain. Hmm? Christ is only restricting the unrighteousness of the world. Live a righteous life. And sex. You want to go with your boyfriend, girlfriends, huh? dating. No. This is the enjoyment. Hmm? You want to hang around with such people and enjoy the world. No. So you think, oh, Christ is restricting me. If you live that life, Tomorrow what will happen to you, you don't know. But God knows that is the reason God is telling Stop it. What you sow, you have to reap. Not just because you are a Christian, all these things are happening. The world is ignorant. They are in darkness. They don't know the after effect of all these. That's the reason you have to bring your friends here. If you love God and love your friends, you will bring your friends here. 
You will not bring. You will think they will not come. Do you know they won't come? They are your souls. You should love your friends. You are hanging around with them for some other reason. You too want to enjoy the sins of the world. That's why you choose. Show me your friends. Then I can tell you what is your character. Come and tell me these are my friends. I will check. Then I know your choice. Then definitely you will tell Jesus is boring. Hallelujah. Dear youngsters, understand if you live that life, you are going to have calamities, sicknesses, so many problems. They will not come and help you. Your friends with whom you are enjoying all these corruption, they will not come and help you. Please understand. You will have only help from God. Be ready to sanctify yourself. Don't say that this is a boring life. This is a difficult life. Hallelujah. Every suffering we go through is a test of faith to do righteousness. Every trouble we go through is a purifying fire. It is a painful purifying fire. It's fire. It's fire. It's for you fire. It's for me fire. It's painful for you. It's painful for me. First Peter 1 6 and Hebrews 12 11. It's painful. But through that we should learn to yield the fruit of righteousness. Are you ready? This is Christian life. If you just come to a church and if you have a membership, you will not become a Christian. We should live that life. A Christian should have testimony. Not one. Testimonies. A Christian should be always rejoicing. His face should not be like should not be like this. Why? 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 Tell me. You can't go through Christ suffering. That's all. I'm not telling it is enjoyable. It is painful for you as well as it is for me. That's why we are together. Please pray for yourself, for me, and for each other. Those who are not praying, shame on you. You are cruel. Being a child of God, you are not praying for you and you are not praying for each other. You are a cruel Christian. Write it. Write it. That is your correct name. We came to love each other. Our God is love. God has taught us love. Eh? Be loving to each other. Pray for each other. And you see that how much you will be blessed. Lack of prayers. Your face is like this. You don't have prayers. Hallelujah. Every suffering we go through threaten our joy. That is to produce character and hope for the development of holiness. When we grow in righteousness, God starts blessing us, delivering us from all our problems. We start growing in righteousness. That is called practicing righteousness. Psalms 34. 19 says, many are the afflictions of righteous, but God delivers them from all. Many are the problems of righteous. In this world also you will have problem. When you are a Christian also you will have problem. But what is the difference between a worldly person and a child of God? With the worldly people, God is not there always. They don't have any help. But with a child of God, he has got supernatural help as he is going through problems. Rejoice and pray. God will come right there and give you a solution. Hallelujah. Being a child of God, your hurts and suffering you should learn to face differently. Being a child of God, you will face many problems. Hmm? Face it differently. If you have not facing your problem differently, Write it in your book. You are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. <laughs> you are Chuma coming to church. That's all. You are hearing the word of God. You may be praying. You may be reading the word. You are doing everything. You didn't learn to live that life. Jesus has taught us how to live. How to face the problem. If a problem comes, a believer is disappearing means, I don't know what to tell. Really. You didn't understand the real life. Hallelujah. So, you should 
face your difficulties differently as a child of God. There are certainly hard moments, difficult circumstances, difficult and frustrating people in our life that we have to face every day. Most of the days, we come against some sort of inconvenience, difficult relationship to navigate in our family, in our work, in our church, and all sort of suffering that can turn entire world upside down. That will come to everyone. Believers understand what are you doing that time. That shows your faith and trust in God. Hallelujah. In the midst of all this, you should practice to rejoice. Rejoicing is a choice. Rejoicing is the evidence and the sign that you have trust and faith in God. Chumma, you don't tell, I have faith, I have faith, I have. Show your faith when a problem comes. Then you have faith and trust in God. Other times you can say, God is good. I have a lot of faith. Everything you can say when you face with a problem. Show your faith. How do you show your faith? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks and go and do your ministry. That time, many of your ministry is closed. Bakla muchre. Office closed because I am going through problems. Let me come out. Then I will go and do ministry. Shame on you. That is the time you should do more ministry. Do you know? Go and encourage people. You will get encouragement. You don't feel like everything we have to do by force and violence. You should be a violent Christian. So what happens when we rejoice? Like every other commandment in the Bible, rejoicing always is a commandment. We benefit from being obedient to this command. And again, Psalms 34, 17 says, When righteous cry for help, God hears, delivers them out of their all troubles. Righteous, everybody will cry. Eh? You may be crying. Where your prayers are going? Righteous cries. God will be listening. God will run and come to them. God will give solution. Hallelujah. Many believers think like other people. God is a demanding being who makes our life boring with rules and regulations. In reality, God's commandments are for our benefit. Please understand. Write it in your book. The problem is, are you ready to change? If you are not ready to change, no need to come to a church. You can be with the worldly people. Hallelujah. So in reality, God's commandments are for our benefit. To save us from all the sicknesses and calamities and bad things that are going to come in future. God will protect us from all those calamities. What more we are going to face in the future, we don't know. But if we continue in our sins, we have to face with all those you should understand. So, obedient to God is a true gift from God. Dear friends, understand. Obedient to God is a gift from God. Nobody is telling. Amen. Nobody is telling. Yes, Pastor. When I preach, I can see faces. Nobody will smile at me. Eh? Then what is there in the Bible? Then how do you get any blessing from God? Huh? This is very difficult, isn't it? Hallelujah. Because the world doesn't know how to obey. We too never knew how to obey. And what is the Purpose behind the obedience, they didn't know. Even believers are not able to understand. Keep obeying what God says and be blessed. That is Christianity. Keep obeying righteous characters. Keep obeying love, joy, peace, patience, meekness and be blessed. This is Christianity. Hallelujah. So when you don't choose to obey this commandment, what happens? Oh, so you are telling, no, this is very difficult. How can I rejoice? I have tried. Many times. So, if you don't rejoice or if you don't choose to rejoice, what happens? I will explain to you. When you get a bad news or when you face with any problem and upset you, it's easy to slip into anger first. Then, negative mindset, which comes with the belief that you are not going to recover from that problem. Your mind will tell, My situations are going to become worst, isn't it? Yes, I know. 
That's why many are absent in the church many times. That's the reason many are doing ministry when you go through problems. I know. Because you are hearing your mind, not the mind of Christ. Your born mind you are hearing. My situation will never improve. I am going to have much problem. Hallelujah. So, it's often our thoughts, not our circumstances, causes to sing in our troubles. Write it in your book. It's often our thoughts, not our circumstances, causes to sink in the problem. Your negative thoughts, your attitude is causing you to have much misery. Our thoughts have power and can easily begin to run our lives when disappointment crushes our dreams, when people hurt us and anger us, when problem seems overwhelming. It is easy to lose joy, caught up in the negative thoughts and feel negative feeling. Fear, anxiety will increase, isn't it? If you don't obey this commandment, this is what is going to happen. Did you get me? At the same time, your problem will definitely increase. Write it, your problem, what you are fearing is going to increase. At the same time, you have chosen to rejoice. What happens? Oh, I will carry the suffering of God, I will rejoice. When you start rejoicing, trusting God, you feel the love of God, you feel the care of God. You have never experienced. You have never experienced. You feel the peace of God inside. You feel hope. Everything will change. The whole atmosphere will change. Understand, my dear friends. The whole attitude will change. You will have hope. Two things you can choose. Rejoicing is your choice. Hallelujah. So when you choose to obey this commandment, to rejoice in your loss or bad news, you feel that comfort. You know, yes, I will not sink in this problem. That faith, nobody can give you. That is the faith directly from heaven. Hallelujah. Nobody can shake you. And you will only speak the faith words thereafter. But if you don't obey this one commandment, you will be singing in your problem. You will speak all the negative. You will never get faith. If you don't get faith, what you get? Fear. Only two things can lead in either faith or fear. If you have faith, you will rejoice always. Hallelujah. So, God has something bigger in store for us. You should understand. With every problem, write it. This is another point. You can remember whenever a problem comes. With every problem, God has a bigger plan for you. With every problem, you are not getting. Why? You are sinking in fear, not rising in faith. You are blaming God. You are irritated. You are angry. You are angry at people. Angry at God. God has a greater plan. Understand my dear friends. Hallelujah. So if you don't feel happy about what you are going through right now. Trust him. Thank him for what he has done and doing. Don't grumble. Don't murmur. Don't be angry over bad things that are happening to you. And I want to stress this point. You should know why it is possible to obey this commandment to rejoice. Is it possible? It is. It is possible to rejoice always. Those who are having this face, listen to me. You can rejoice always. Hmm? If you know the benefit, if you know the purpose, hallelujah. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Every trial is a test of faith to produce patience to character, that is self-control. When we are past those tests exercising self-control, that will produce character. Then only we are real children of God. Many people will only preach and hear God is love, God is love, God is love. 
God is love. If you say God is love and if you are loving God, obey God's commandments. If you are rejoicing and growing in the righteousness only, you are a real child of God, a genuine child of God. Then only you are saved. Then only you are a saved person. Not everybody who is coming to church is saved. Not everyone who has taken baptism is saved. Hmm? Not everyone who has taken baptism and coming to church will reach heaven. Don't think that everybody will go. Not everyone who has taken baptism and coming to church will get all the promises that is written in the Bible. That's the reason people are getting frustrated, frustrated and leaving the church. Hallelujah. Then only you will be saved. Then only you are perfect and complete. James 1 4 says. You will be perfect and complete. James 1 2 to 4 says. Count it all joy when you face with many troubles. Knowing that those troubles are testing of your faith to produce patience. Patience to character. Then only you are complete. Then only you are a real child of God. You may say you are a child of God. But for God, you are not. And don't think that if you don't grow in righteousness as a child of God, God will bless you and you are a good child. Some people will think it's option that you have to obey. Romans 2, 8 says, Those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness will have wrath and fury. Believers will not have wrath and fury from heaven. Hmm? Those who are self-seeking do not obey the truth. This is written for believers. Unbelievers will not believe and obey the truth. If believers are not obeying the truth, they will have wrath and fury. And seventh verse is telling, those who by patience, well-doing, seek for glory and immortality, for them God will give eternal life. This verse, Romans 2, 7 is not telling those who are born again baptized, he will give eternal life. Instead, it is written, those who by patience in doing righteousness seek for glory and honor seek. They will seek the honor and glory and immortality for them. He will give eternal life. Hallelujah. If you don't go through this process and be cleansed, what will happen? Fear and doubt will grow in you. Troubles will increase for sure. With faith, you will have joy, peace. You will have many blessings. And you will get the promises of God. But what is leading you? Is it anxiety, fear and worries? Understand. What will happen? Trouble will only increase. Your fear will only increase. Hallelujah. You have to go through this process. You have to go through the process and they are the test to grow in righteousness. You will grow in boldness. Those who are growing in righteousness, going through the painful fire and become holy, they will become bold as a lion. I told you, their faith will increase. They will be all the time ministers. All the time ministers. Not seasonal ministers. <laughs> Some of you are seasonal ministers. And everything is going good. You are a minister of God. When some problem comes, you are at rest. Hey, illa. Elli avaru udukkondu hogbeku. Seasonal ministers. Hmm? Are you a seasonal God's worker? A God's worker should be always in the field. They don't have any raja, holiday. Always they will be working. Hallelujah. So they are as bold as lion. And they will be prosperous. Psalms 1, 1, 2, and 3. As they grow, they will have many testimonies. You are not having testimony. That's why you are not becoming bold. You don't have testimony because you are a seasonal worker. Hallelujah. And you will turn many to righteousness. Daniel 12, 3. You will become righteous. 
you will turn many to righteousness that is your profession what's your profession turning many to righteousness helping many to reach heaven what's your profession yes of course you are going to office of course you are a student of course you are doing something else at the same time you have a profession from heaven don't do seasonal profession full time work for that you don't have to leave your job and this is called full time worker some of you are thinking that you have to leave your job and be a full time worker hmm? understand my dear friends you will turn many to righteousness you will do god's work and you will see that others life should change your life will entirely change how through two commandments rejoice always and carry in christ sufferings if you are not ready for these two you are not a christian <laughs> of course you will be a seasonal minister of god hallelujah we can practice joy as a lifestyle when we believe that god can bring good out of every challenge we face then every challenge we face gives us one more reason to rejoice in the lord all these things you should write it on your walls please understand hallelujah it's worth and we will have greater victory and we will have greater deliverance so for this to enjoy this blessed life eh you should separate some time you have to invest some time in your life all the time 24 hours if you are utilizing for yourself eh to earn money or to cook and eat food or to have education you don't get this life you have to invest spending time in god's word praying not just for you pray for everyone and worshiping doing ministry never be a seasonal minister always you should be in the field he is a real christian a real christian will never be absent in his ministry please understand write it never be absent in his ministry always it will be bubbling to bring somebody to church or to encourage someone to lord every day every day is work huh? not that weekly work some of you are doing weekly because weekly holiday you get i can see the report that day other days no absent seasonal workers hallelujah and you should be serving you should be doing ministry and you should surround yourself with the biblical community all these are essential to equip us to respond with a deeply rooted joy when trouble comes rejoice always rejoice in the lord dear friends obey this commandment and enjoy the benefit of this commandment let's close our eyes in prayers hallelujah